Hi, in this video I'll be demonstrating how to make the cable that actually came with the inverter. But if you've lost your cable, it's a RS-232 to RJ45 cable and we use it to communicate with the inverter or even update the firmware. So if you've got one of these Voltronic inverters, often called an expert, you'll see that in the inverter at the back there is an RJ45 connector but it's actually an RS-232 communication port and you will need a specific cable. All right, so to build a cable, I'll need a spare RJ45. And then on the other side, I will be using a serial connector. So here is my serial connector. So remember that we are actually going from RJ45, but actually it's not an Ethernet protocol. It is RJ45 used as the plug or the connector, but it's really, it's using an RS-232 protocol. So what we are really doing is just making an RS-232 cable, which will then be plugged into an RS-232 or serial port to USB converter. So this will then be able to go to a modern laptop. If you have an old laptop or an old computer that has an RS-232 connector on it then you could connect directly from the RJ45 following the pinouts to the RS-232 and then you could connect directly but in this case in this video I'll be demonstrating how to set it up so you go from the RJ45 which is present on the modern expert inverters and other ones that are similar in this case it's going to a male so I will be using a female RS-232. So I'm just now going to build the cable. Here are the pinouts. So I'm going from the RJ45 side, which is this side. I'm going to be using four wires. So it'll be, I'm going to be using pin one, two, four, and eight. And then on the RS-232 side, which in this case will be female, I'll be wiring it to pins one, six, five, and nine. All right, so you're gonna need a spare cable. I've just got an ethernet cable and I'm just going to open it up so that I can wire it into these pins over here and then I will solder it on the other side for this DB9 serial connector port. I'm just exposing some of the ethernet wires. Right, so I have the ethernet color coding and I'm going to use that color coding for the following reason. Most people are not going to be doing this. They're probably going to take an old fly lead, which has already been wired, and then they're just going to cut it and then use the wires as such. So I'm going to just follow the color coding so that whoever watches this video will be able to uh, do this job. So the Ethernet wiring standard is orange, white, orange, green, white, blue, blue, white, green, brown, white, brown. So I'm going to quickly wire that. So once I've completed it, I will only be using wire one, two, four, and eight. One will be orange white, which is the leftmost wire. The next one is pin two, which will be orange. There you can see orange. And then I'll be using pin four, which in this case will be the solid blue. And then the last one will be pin eight, which will be brown. All right, so this side is made. There is the boot and I followed the ethernet wiring standard. Now on the other side, I've just exposed some of the wire and I'm just going to use only the colors which are relevant to the serial connector for this application. Right, so these are the four colors that I need. This would be pin one on the ethernet connector. The solid orange is pin two and then pin four is blue and then pin eight is the brown. So there we go. I'm now going to just use these and I'm going to be soldering it directly onto this DB9 connector as follows. So then I'm going from pin one to pin two. Pin two will go to pin three on the DB9 nine connector and then pin four will go to nine eight to five on the back of your db9 we'll see that it starts on the top left with pin one all right so i'm working on pin two so i'm just putting some solder in two then i'm also going to be using three then i'm going to be using number five and then the uh, number nine on the ethernet side i'm just going to tin these uh, that just means i'm just putting some solder on them so it's easier when it's time to place them into the slots now at this point, just check if you are gonna be using a cover of sorts, just make sure if your cover needs to go on first. In my case, it goes on like a sandwich, so I don't need to put any covers on now. Right, I'm going from the RJ45 pin one, which is orange white, and I'm going to be soldering it directly into the DB9 on pin number two. Right, so this is how it looks. Pin one, orange white, goes to pin two, orange white, 
then it's pin two on this side, orange goes to pin three, then the blue one, which is pin four on this side, goes to number nine on that side, and then we've got uh, the brown over here, which is pin eight, which is pin five on the DB9. All right, I'm just closing my little cover here. All right, so there is the cable. So now I can plug this directly into my RS-232 to USB connector. And this side can go to the laptop. And this side over here can go to the inverter. Right, on this inverter, I'm just plugging in the cable on this side where it says common. Then I just have my DB9 to USB converter, which is plugged in on the side of my laptop. All right, so I'm now going to use the Watch Power app. And automatically, it should pick up the inverter. There it comes up. It will come up with the full serial name. If you're having a problem here, you can say uh, watch power configuration and then it says here COM port and there it's showing the COM port. Now, if you want to just have a closer look at your COM port, you can go to the device manager and just make sure that your laptop automatically installed the USB to serial COM port. In this case, it's COM port 5. Over here, I've got other COM ports which I'm not using. So I'm just showing you, you might have other COM ports. What's most important here is that the one that's the USB to serial converter that I've just plugged in. For example, if I unplug it, I can see that that is the one that I am using. For example, if I plug it back in, notice that that COM port number five comes up again. You can relabel this if you wanted to. You could call it number one or two. You could just say properties and then change the port settings. If your device requires you to have a different bits per second, uh, stop bit, etc. But in my case, I'm not doing that. So you could go to advanced and then you could make some changes. And then over here, it says COM port five. You can call it whatever you want. So in my case, I'm just using COM port five and I can confirm that the driver is available. It's already installed. If you're getting this triangle, it means there's a problem with that COM port, meaning maybe your serial to USB converter needs to be installed properly. So it should look like this. Now I can go to watch power. And I can see that I can communicate with the inverters. Now, if you do want to adjust some of the settings, for example, I want to change this one setting over here and I say apply, it's asking for a password. The default password is administrator in lower case. And once you've set that password, it will then work. There you can see it says setting successful.